गो वैष्णवेभ्यो नमो नम जय श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभु निनंद श्री अद्वैत गाधर श्रीवास आदि गौर भक्त वृंद हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे सो विल बी रीडिंग फ्रॉम भगवत गीता चैप्टर सेवन वर्स नंबर सिक्स यू ऑल आर एबल टू सी माई स्क्रीन राइट ओके All right, I'll uh, chant the verse, and you all can repeat after me. Etad yoni ni bhutani. Etad yoni bhutani. Sarvani ti upadha upadharya. Sarvani upadharya. Aham Krishna se jagataha. Aham Krishna se jagataha. प्रभवा सिनेनिम्स एतत, एतत, दीस टू नेचर्स, दीस टू नेचर्स, योनीन, योनीनी, हुस सोर्स ऑफ बर्थ, हुम, हुस सोर्स ऑफ बर्थ, भूतानी, भूतानी, एवरीथिंग क्रिएटेड, एवरीथिंग क्रिएटेड, सर्वानी, सर्वानी, ऑल, ऑल, इति, इति, दस, दस उपधारया उपधारया नो नो अहम अहम आय आय कृष्णस्य कृष्णस्य ऑल इंक्लूसिव ऑल इंक्लूसिव जगतः जगतः ऑफ द वर्ल्ड ऑफ द वर्ल्ड प्रभवः प्रभवः द सोर्स ऑफ मैनिफेस्टेशन The source of manifestation. Pralayaha. Pralayaha. Annihilation. Annihilation. Tatha. Tatha. As well as. As well as. Translation and purport by His Divine Grace, Sri Sri Bhakti Dham Swami Shri Lakshmipad. Shri Lakshmipad. All created beings. have their source in these two natures of all that is material and all that is spiritual in this world know for certain that i am both the origin and the dissolution purport everything that exists is a product of matter and spirit spirit is the basic field of creation and matter is created by spirit spirit is not created at a certain stage of material development rather this material world is manifested only on the basis of spiritual energy this material body is developed because spirit is present within matter a child grows gradually to boyhood and then to manhood because that superior energy spirit soul is present similarly the entire cosmic manifestation of the gigantic universe is developed because of the presence of the super soul vishnu therefore spirit and matter which combine to manifest this gigantic universal form are originally two energies of the lord <clears throat> and consequently the lord is the original cause of everything a fragmental part and parcel of the lord namely the living entity may be the cause of a big skyscraper a big factory or even a big city but he cannot be the cause of a big universe 
the cause of the big universe is the big soul or the super soul. And Krishna, the supreme, is the cause of both the big and small souls. Therefore, he is the original cause of all causes. This is confirmed in the Katha Upanishad 2 to 13. Nityo Nityanam Chetanas Chetananam. <clears throat> Namam Vishnu Padaya, Krishna Pushtaya, Bhutale, Shimati Bhakti Vidanta Samaniti Nam Hade, Namaste, Saraswati Devi Gauravani Pracharine, Nir Vishesha Shunneva Di Paschatu Deshatarine, Om Namo Bhagavate Vasu Devaya, Om Namo Bhagavate Vasu Devaya, Om Namo Bhagavate Vasu Devaya, I'll read the translation once again. All created beings have their source in these two natures of all that is material and all that is spiritual in this world. Know for certain that I am both the origin and the dissolution. Okay. <clears throat> so here, uh, Krishna very clearly saying he is basically distinguishing between his two separate <clears throat> energies. And of all that is material and the, all that is spiritual, he's saying that Krishna, he himself is the origin of everything, both origin as well as the dissolution, right? So Prabhupada has very nicely explained that how uh, both the spirit soul and the material body are the two separate energies of the Supreme Lord. One of them is superior and the other one is inferior. Of course, the spirit soul is superior and the material world of which the material body is made of, that is inferior. But the origin of both of those uh, is in Krishna, right? <clears throat> so therefore, uh, even for this material body, although uh, the basis of the material body is the spirit soul, uh, the living entity that exists be, uh, behind uh, the material body, the bodies that we have, but ultimately, the origin is the, su the super soul himself or Krishna, right? As Krishna also explains at other place, Bhumi rapo nalo vayu, kham man buddhir evacha, ahanka ritiyam me bhinna prakriti ashtada, aparyam itastanyam prakriti vidhi me param, jiva bhuta mahabaho yadam dharite jagat, right? So here, Krishna very clearly indicates uh, about the two separate energies of the Supreme Lord, right? And that out of those, there is one inferior and the other one is superior, right? So he's saying, Bhumir Apo Nalo Vayu, right? So Bhumi means earth, <clears throat> Apo means water, Anil means fire, Vayu means air, right? <clears throat> Kham Man Buddhir Evacha Ahankar, right? So Kham means ether or the blank space. And then, so these are the five gross elements. And then we have the three more subtle elements, but they are also material, right? Which is Man, buddhi, and ahankar, right? So mind, intelligence, and ego. So these eight energies constitute the inferior energy of the Supreme Lord, also known as the material energy of the Supreme Lord, right? Uh, and separate from this, there is another superior energy Krishna is saying, aparayam itastanyam prakriti vidhi me param, right? So param, this word param, it indicates that it is superior and different from the material energy of the Supreme Lord. Jiva Bhuta Mahabaho, right? So Krishna is saying these living entities, they are the superior energy. Yaidam Dharate Jagat, right? And these are the ones who seem to be, uh, you know, engaging in this material world, right? Dharate Jagat means they have, uh, uh, they have basically took, up, took it upon themselves to run the material world. In reality, it is Krishna himself who is running the material world. As Krishna says, Maya Dhakshena Prakriti Suyate Sacharachara, Hetu Nanena Kaunte Yajagat Viparivartate. Right? So, through uh, his material energy or Maya Shakti, uh, Maya Devi, Krishna is actually uh, running everything, even in this material world. But we think foolishly that we are actually the doers, right? Or we are doing everything. But in fact, uh, Krishna is the one who, through his faculty of a material energy is actually running everything in this material world. At other place, uh, Krishna says, 
ईश्वर क्रियमाना गुणय कर्मा सर्वसा अहंकार विमूढ़ात्मा करता हम मन्य राइट सो ऑल दो इट्स द सुपर सोल और कृष्णा हिमसेल्फ हुई डूइंग एवरीथिंग बट आउट ऑफ आर फुलिशनेस वी थिंक दैट वी आर द डूअर्स राइट सो दिस दिस इज अ वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट पॉइंट फॉर अस टू अंडरस्टैंड राइट अबाउट द सुपीरियर एनर्जी द इनफीरियर एनर्जी कृष्णा and that krishna is the origin of both the superior as well as the inferior energy right so the root cause uh, of our delusion in this material world is that we identify ourselves with the inferior energy of the supreme lord or this material body when in fact we are the superior energy of the lord right but <clears throat> out of false ego we we start to misidentify ourselves with this material body right which is the inferior energy of the lord right it is real it is not uh, it is not a fiction right this material world does exist like many times impersonalists they do say uh, brahma satya jagat mithya right so jagat mithya basically means that this world is false right in fact the world is not false the world actually does exist as krishna himself says uh, he speaks about the two energies that he has so this material world is also an energy of the supreme lord right so in that sense it is not mithya or it is not false it is also real but what is false is our identification with the material world right that's the subtle difference that we need to understand our identification with this material world is what mithya or false and that's what the mistake we need to correct right so the entire practice of krishna consciousness the whole objective of that is to revive the true consciousness or the true ego which is what which is that we are the superior energy of of krishna right we are brahma na jayate mriyate va kadachin nayam bhutva bhavita vana bhuya ajo nityo shashvato yam puranu na hanyate hanye mane shreeye right so uh, the superior energy of the supreme lord you know since we are the superior energy the, there are some characteristics that we have right which are very very different <clears throat> from this material body right so krishna is saying na jayate mriyate va kadachin so it does not it never took birth and it will never die nayam bhuta bhavita vana bhuya right it did not have a past it it did not come into existence in the past or it will uh, dissolve in the future right it is always staying ajo nityo shashvato yam purano right so it is uh, it cannot be killed right it is eternal and uh, it cannot be damaged by any means right whereas if you look at the material body it is the exact opposite right so if you cut the material body it can get damaged and of course we know that uh, you know all of us have to die eventually and at the time of death this body goes back to the gross elements right so earth water fire air ether they all uh, dissolve themselves into uh, the nature you know into earth goes into earth fire goes into fire right we know that process right so this material body it goes back the elements are returned back the gross elements are returned back and the subtle body <clears throat> carries the mind intelligence and ego right so the subtle body is carried away by the living entity into a new body right based on uh, the thoughts and the contemplation that one uh, one has at the time of death uh, he basically goes to the body inspired by that consciousness at the time of of death यम यम वापि स्मरण भाव त्यजते अंत कले तम तम एवैति कौंतया सदा तद भाव भावित राइट सो वॉट एवर कॉन्शियसनेस वी हैव एट द टाइम ऑफ डेथ वी गेट द नेक्स्ट बॉडी अकॉर्डिंगली सो इट इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट फॉर अस टू प्योरिफाई अवर कॉन्शियसनेस राइट टू कम टू दिस अंडरस्टैंडिंग दैट आई एम नॉट दिस मटीरियल बॉडी एंड इन फैक्ट आई एम द इटर्नल सर्वेंट ऑफ द सुप्रीम लॉर्ड right it is very very important for us to understand this this fact that uh, if we do not practice sufficiently right throughout our lifetime it is very important for us to change our consciousness suddenly at the moment of death right some people foolishly think <clears throat> that because krishna has said that you know if we think about him at the time of death we will go back to him we will return to his nature so you know we can enjoy ourselves we can do whatever we want uh you know while we are in this material world and you know at the time of death we can remember him and we'll go back to him right but that is now how it works right so for example if a if if a kid you know he says that you know let me play 
throughout the year and when the exam comes you know at the last moment i will be able to put down all of the answers it's not so easy right it needs a lot of practice so <clears throat> basically our understanding or the false ego and identification of ourselves with this material body this disease has been with us since eternity right and that is the that is the reason why we are suffering in this material world and you know moving in circles in these 8.4 million species of life now for us to get out of this we have to come out of the consciousness and we have to stop uh, identifying ourselves with this material body instead of that we have to identify ourselves as the part and parcel of the supreme lord as krishna says mamai vamsho jeeva loke jeeva bhuta sanatana mana sasthani indriyani prakriti sthani karshat right so we are it, we are eternal part and parcel of the supreme lord uh and our true identity is that we are the servants of the supreme lord but because of our misidentification with this material world we are suffering here and we are going around and around uh in this 8.4 million species of life right so now someone might argue that what was the need you know if both uh the material energy and the superior uh, energy are both uh, the energies of the supreme lord and he is the cause of both of them what was the need for krishna uh to to have the secondary energy of the material nature you know what was the point of having it right if we eventually do not have to identify ourselves with the inferior energy of the supreme lord what was the point of creating that so the answer to that is material energy of the supreme lord uh exists simply to facilitate our experience in this material world right uh without that we we are so incapable right we are so incapable that we cannot even support our experience in this material world right our existence cannot happen right so if we do not have a body uh we cannot engage our faculties and interact with this material world and therefore we cannot exert our control right so the whole point that the material material world exists and the krishna engages his material energy uh into this material world is to facilitate an experience for us right and why does that experience need, needs to be facilitated because we want that right so uh, because of our envious nature you know we are envious of krishna and we want to be the supreme controllers although krishna is the supreme controller but we foolishly think that you know we want to be the supreme controllers and we start to misidentify our happiness uh with the aspect of control right so krishna if you look at him he is sachidananda vigraha right anadi radir govinda sarvakaran karana right so he is uh, the embodiment of sat chit and anand right sat means eternity chit means knowledge and anand means bliss right so he is naturally and spontaneously completely blissful uh and we as part and parcels we are also seeking bliss right if if i ask any one of you and you are you give a certain amount certain answer right and if i ask you why do you need that in your life eventually you will tell me that because that gives me happiness right so ultimately what all of us are seeking is happiness now we should question that why is it that we are seeking only happiness and why we are not seeking something else right uh, just like uh, you know newton he questioned why is the apple falling down it's not going up right so something some things in this material world are so obvious right we just forget to question why that is the case and when we do that uh, you know we are not using the capabilities that are provided to us or the facilities that are provided to us in this material body right in this human form of life so the human form of life is special uh, because we have a certain amount of inquisitiveness right we have more evolved uh, mind and intelligence uh, that can ask questions and seek answers right this facility is not available to us uh, in an animal body or a plant body right this is only available to us when we are uh, you know we have the body of a human so we should utilize this facility very very nicely right we should question that why is it uh, that i am always seeking happiness you know why why does no one want distress and that is because because krishna is the embodiment of satchid anand then we are his part and parcel we are always seeking that happiness right so in a way we could say that all of us knowingly or unknowingly are actually uh, seeking krishna only right in that sense because all of us 
want to be happy and all of us are seeking happiness right and krishna is the embodiment of that happiness right so happiness is one aspect of krishna the other aspect of krishna is control right because if he does not control then who will facilitate our experiences whether in the material world or in the spiritual world right <clears throat> so that for for us to engage in a loving relationship with krishna uh, a certain amount of facility needs to be created right and for krishna to create that facility he has to use that control right but the important thing we need to understand that whenever it comes to control krishna has delegated those responsibilities you know in the case of material world that responsibility is delegated to uh, maya devi as krishna says maya dhakshena prakriti suyate sacharacharam right so he does not directly do that but he has delegated it uh, to prakriti right or his material energy right similarly in the spiritual world uh, you know he has delegated that to his spiritual potency or yog maya right <clears throat> Uh, but when it comes to engaging with the devotees he personally engages with the devotees like just like we see in the case of uh, arjuna right we see krishna himself becomes the charioteer right he is directly engaging with arjun in the, these questions and these answers that we see bhagavad gita right he is directly engaging uh, you know when gajendra he needed help he directly comes to help gajendra right there are so many examples where we see krishna directly engaging with the devotees right because that's what he does that's what his full time 24/7 engagement is right that's what uh, that's what he enjoys doing right so so the devotees enjoy engaging with krishna and krishna enjoys engaging with the devotees and through that uh, they are all experiencing bliss right it's like a mutual give and take uh, <clears throat> and wherever this control aspect comes krishna has already delegated those responsibilities but we because we are envious and out of our foolishness we start to relate Uh, happiness with control right and because of that we think that by being the controllers we can be happy right so that's why we see in this material world all of us are trying to uh, trying to express control right we want to be the supreme controllers and we think by becoming the supreme controllers we can be happy right but there cannot be anything further from the truth right therefore we see in this material world you know people are running after money right everyone wants money right money is not uh, a piece of paper we have to understand what money is and why do people why does everyone want wants money right why does everyone wants to be rich right that could be another question that we should ask and the reason is exactly this right because the more money i have the more control i have right i can seek more services and goods right and the more services i can seek i can exert more of a control in this material world right so because we have this propensity to be the absolute controllers uh we tend to uh you know strive for more control either political or you know by making more money right so everyone is trying to do that in our circle uh, or in our uh, in in our sphere of effect right in our social circles all of us we know we want to be the best right best in the sense we want to have the most amount of control right and that propensity is coming from that fact <clears throat> because we want to be uh, the absolute controllers right and because we want to be the absolute controllers uh, krishna had to facilitate that experience right because if krishna did not facilitate that experience where will we exert our control right it won't be possible <clears throat> uh, so in order for uh, for us to be able to uh, you know practice control try to become krishna through control krishna had to facilitate this experience right now someone might ask uh, that you know what was the point of uh, krishna you know creating this material creation right if he knew that we are seeking the wrong thing right if he knew that uh, that is not in our best interest to be the controllers and in fact we can never be the controllers why did krishna go ahead and still facilitate that experience why couldn't he correct us right so the the answer to that question is because krishna respects our free will right and that's that's the basic requirement uh, in any loving relationship right so for example if there is a chair right i can move it the way i want right but uh, if it is someone who i love you know the difference between that person and the chair is i will have to respect their desire right we have to respect their free will 
because if I violate anyone's free will, if I have the capability to violate anyone's free will and I do that, then there won't be any difference between uh, you know a chair and, and a person, right? They would basically be the same. So the basic requirement of a loving relationship is that uh, the two people have to respect each other's free will, right? They cannot violate that. So Krishna is very, very, very much mindful of that. And therefore, he never violates our free will. He always respects our free will, right? Uh, but because we desire to be the controllers and that experience needs to be facilitated because we ourselves are not capable. So therefore, he has engaged his material energy in creating this material world, right? But the good thing is, uh, there are no permanent repercussions of this, right? This is just an experience, right? So all we are doing yet, right, in this material world, you know, we are taking a birth as a dog, as a cat, as a hog, finally as a human, right? Or even as higher species, for example, a demigod, or even Brahma, right? <clears throat> this is all temporary, right? It's like, uh, if you have played video games, like it's uh, changing from one avatar to the next avatar, right? We keep moving. We keep moving from one stage to the next. We keep keep evolving, right? Eventually, we get tired of that game and we give up, right? We just, uh, you know, stop playing the game, right? So that's, that's how this world is operating, right? We are simply experiencing life. Uh, we are trying to exert our control and we are trying to enjoy this material nature because we misidentify ourselves, as you know uh, a material body and not the eternal living uh, entity who is uh, who should always be engaged in serving the supreme lord because of this misidentity we are kind of engaged in this simulation which is this material world right that has been facilitated through the inferior energy of the supreme lord uh, which is his material nature right uh, so by doing that you know we are going from one body to the next body experiencing so many different pains, so-called pains and pleasures, right? And all of these pains and pleasures, how are they derived? Basically, these are simply derived through our interaction with the three modes of material nature. That's all it is. There is nothing beyond that, right? So there are three modes of material nature, uh, mode of goodness, mode of passion, mode of ignorance. And when the living entity, right, uh, we engage with these three modes, different kinds of pains and pleasures arise, right? And we experience that. We simply keep experiencing that all the time in one body. And then we develop some kind of propensities. And then we want to satisfy those propensities. And as we want to satisfy those propensities, we prepare the next body, right? So we keep moving from one body to the next body, uh, engaging with the three modes of material nature and experiencing so-called pains and pleasures, right? But in reality, uh, this is not the permanent solution, right? until and unless we engage uh, in the loving devotional service of the Lord and, and we give up this propensity to control, uh, this problem cannot be solved, right? We will keep moving around in the circle of, you know, 8.4 million species of life, of life, right? So our acharyas have told us very nicely and they have given us this very nice process by practicing which we can come out of the circle of birth and death, right? And this process is, uh, Krishna consciousness, right? So we have to gradually understand uh, that we are not this material body, but we are the superior energy of the Supreme Lord, right? Uh, and we are his part and parcels. Uh, but to revive that consciousness is not easy, right? For example, if you have a disease, you have to take certain kind of medicines, you have to follow certain do's and certain don'ts. And when you do that over a period of time, you know, if you're following the instructions, whatever the doctor is telling you, eventually, uh, you can get rid of that disease, right? And that also applies to a habit, right? If you have a certain habit, you have to practice uh, in order to get rid of that habit. Or even in the case of material knowledge, right? Whatever material knowledge uh, we have today, we have observed uh, that for us to cultivate that knowledge and come to a certain understanding and you know become adapted at it, we have to practice over a long period of time, right? For example, if I am working as an engineer, Right. For me to become an engineer, I had to first of all, you know, take admission in kindergarten. Then from kindergarten, you know, went to the first grade, then first to eventually to the fifth grade, then uh, you know, to the college, and then some people pursue PhDs and postdocs. Right. So it takes about 25 years on an average for a person to become employable. Right. So just imagine if it takes that long 
for us to get some kind of an expertise in material sciences uh, to for it to be meaningful just imagine you know how much time and effort uh, it would take for us to understand uh, and uh, that i am not this material body but i am the living soul right because there has been conditioning for so many lifetimes right we have this lifetimes of conditioning in uh, within us and we have this conviction that i am this material body and and i'm not the part and parcel of the supreme lord so for us to cultivate this idea for us to realize that i have nothing to do with this material energy of the supreme lord right this is simply to facilitate my experience and we have to stop identifying ourselves with this and we have to realize that we are in fact the superior energy of the supreme lord which is totally different just like oil can never mix with the water similarly the living entity who we actually are can never mix with this material world we have always been different we are still different and we will always be different right so you know we are always separate from the uh, uh, from the material energy of the supreme lord and that is a fact and till the point we realize that uh you know we cannot uh in any way uh, achieve perfection right so that's what we are all seeking now how do we do that right although to we have said that we need to understand that i'm not this body and i'm the soul but the big question is how do we do that and as i indicated right that would need practice abhyasa yoga yuktena chetasya nanya gamina krishna says right so we have to practice abhyas means practice so abhyasa yoga yuktena chetasya nanya gamina parmam purusham divyam yati parthanu chintyan krishna says right so we have to meditate upon the supreme lord you know at another place uh, when arjuna says you know that uh, it's very very difficult for me to control my mind you know i can control the wind but i cannot control the mind uh and then krishna agrees to that point right he says uh that absolutely you are right arjun uh you know it's not easy to to control the mind but it is possible and how is it possible abhyasena to konteya vairagyena chakriya says right through practice and through detachment right so through constant practice and that can happen over a period of time if we think that you know we can lead uh, like a completely materialistic life when we are young or we are kids right and suddenly when we turn 70 or 80 you know we can ramp up our uh, spiritual practice and we can realize who we actually are and we will be able to go back to godhead that's not feasible right that will never happen it's like that student who thinks you know i have sufficient amount of time you know let let the exams come and uh, uh, you know i will be able to uh, practice right that's not never going to happen so therefore we have to be mindful are you all able to hear me yeah can yeah. okay yeah because my other speaker actually went off so i'm not talking through my phone <clears throat> so we basically need a constant practice right and this practice uh, the krishna consciousness process that has been given to us by our acharyas right it is so subtle uh, and it is so perfect that if we practice it on a regular basis as instructed by our guru and our acharyas success is guaranteed <clears throat> right some uh, you know there is a famous saying when you know someone asked prabhupad you know it's very difficult for me to do what should i do and krishna says you just hold, hold on to my dhoti basically right so if we strictly follow prabhupad you know whatever he's saying in whatever our acharyas are saying and the process that they have provided to us if we practice uh, practice this diligently throughout our lives uh, it's like you know sitting in a car which is driving on its own like it's self driven car right we will ultimately reach the destination right and the good thing is we do not have to do we do not have to change uh, our day to day activities in any way it's not like we have to leave this uh, you know whatever activities we are doing our field of action and you know we have to go to a forest right that's not required what is required is we keep ourselves engaged in our day to day activities but the focus and the attention should always be on the supreme lord and that's not easy right that that will come through practice 
that constant engagement in krishna consciousness needs to be cultivated and that can be cultivated through practice right so we see that uh, you know uh, there is such a nice process that has been given to us uh, there is a morning program and uh, by the mercy of uh, lord jagannath baldev subhadra we now you know have a bigger temple right and we have a uh, regular mangala aarti in that temple right so a lot of us will be getting the opportunity to you know be able to physically serve the supreme lord there we also have a morning program on zoom where you know all of us can come together and uh, we can basically uh, chant together right we can discuss bhagavad gita together uh, we can offer nursing aarti and tulsi aarti on a regular basis right so first thing in the morning if you start your day in this way uh, you can constantly be krishna conscious throughout the day right so we can do that then you know there is a bhagavatam class right where we get the opportunity to uh, understand uh, shrimad bhagavatam and then we start our day so even if we are engaged in all kinds of materialistic activities right but if our consciousness uh, is always on the lotus feet of the supreme lord then we are not creating the body right so it's like although we are engaged in the material world but those actions uh then become devotional service actually if we if we have the right motivation right if we think that whatever we are doing if we understand things as they are right so we have to understand what is the objective of engaging in, in our day to day activities right because we want to earn a livelihood right and that is a requirement because we are in this material world we have to earn a livelihood without that we cannot even maintain this body right and krishna says that in bhagavad gita that you know what to talk about anything else you win, we cannot even sustain our material body if we do not engage in action but then krishna also instructs how should we perform the action right so krishna says the actions or the activities that we perform should be performed as a yagya right if we perform our activities as a yagya then those same activities instead of binding us to this material world they will become the cause of our liberation and what is yagya krishna says bhoktaram yagya tapasam sarva lokam eshwaram suhridam sarva bhutanam gyatvamam shantirichit right so any so krishna is saying that i am the ultimate benefactor of all the yagyas and all the penances right so if if i turn this around we can understand that anything that is done for the pleasure of the supreme lord right whatever action is done for pleasing the supreme lord that action becomes a yagya right so what krishna is saying is that we do not have to change our actions right the actions stay the same right if i work for a bank you know i i do not have to leave that and go to a forest i could still do that the only thing that we need to change is the consciousness right we have to the motivational force should be the service of the supreme lord right so we have to understand that you know if we have a family if we have a wife if we have our kids uh, and we are living in this material world we have our parents right we have certain responsibilities towards the society as well so we have to understand that all of these things have been provided to us by krishna right he is the ultimate he is the ultimate owner right because he is the origin of all of us this material world belongs to the supreme lord our family members uh, you know now they are with us in this material life uh, we don't know where they were in the previous life and we will we do not know what will happen to them in the next life but krishna knows right krishna always keeps a track because he is traveling with each individual as a super soul uh, within our hearts right and as he himself says all of us are his part and parcel right and he is the ultimate seed giving father so in that capacity he is actually uh, you know our supreme father and he is responsible for all of us right so if we understand everything in the correct context right if we understand that this material world belongs to the supreme lord and similarly my relatives my family members all of them they belong to the supreme lord and they have been given to us uh, to me as a responsibility right and because krishna has provided me this responsibility i have to take care of them as well right and at the same time i have to ensure that they realize that their true benefit or the uh, the true well being i mean of course you need food to eat to be able to uh, sustain the body right so there are certain bodily needs and all of that is needed but the true well being of every living entity is to realize that i am not this material body but i am the part and parcel of the supreme lord right so we also have to ensure 
while we are taking care of their material needs, we should also ensure that somehow or the other, first of all, we ourselves have to ensure that we are engaged in Krishna consciousness, uh, which is the ultimate aim, right? That is the ultimate objective of this life. There are so many different objectives, but ultimately everything comes down to this. I have to realize that I am not this material body, but I am part and parcel of the Supreme Lord. And the true pleasure is by engaging in the service of the Supreme Lord. Right? That's the ultimate objective. That's what we need to realize. right? And this practice of Krishna consciousness that has been given to us by Prabhupada and our Acharyas, that is simply given to us so that we can realize that fact. Right? So we ourselves should first of all ensure that we are sincerely engaged in this practice. And then we should also uh, try our best we of course cannot control anyone else right they have their own free will and krishna also respects their free will so who are we to violate their free will right we should not but at the same time we can ensure from our end uh, you know we can pray for them and we can kind of create an environment so that it becomes easy for them to also practice krishna consciousness right and while we are doing that we should also try our best that you know other people you know people in general in the society they are also engaged in this practice, right? And we see the devotees of the Lord, they are naturally so kind, just like Srila Prabhupada, right? Uh, what was the need for him to come to the Western world, to the US at, at a ripe age of 69? You know, when everyone is thinking about retirement, Prabhupada, uh, you know, he braved uh, two heart attacks. He had to travel for so long on the sea. He, you know, he tolerated so much, right? He took so many pains. Why? There was no need, right? He himself was totally satisfied. He was completely Krishna conscious uh, for himself, right? He was totally engaged in Krishna consciousness. And he understood this idea that, you know, I'm not this body and the soul, right? He was completely on a transcendental platform. But he took that much pain and he came so far just because he was he was so merciful and he was kind. You know, the uh, devotees naturally have a very kind and a soft heart. And it took so much pain to preach the science of Krishna consciousness to... Uh, you know, uh, all of us living entities who are in the darkness, you know, who consider ourselves to be the material bodies. Right? So similarly, uh, you know, we have certain obligations, right? And uh, we are in a preaching movement, right? So while we are practicing Krishna consciousness and we are engaged in our day-to-day -day activities, we should also try to find some time uh, to give this Krishna consciousness to others. Uh, to facilitate through monetary means and then, you know, to create a good environment for Krishna consciousness for our family, for our friends, for everyone, wherever possible, respecting their free will, of course, right? So that is important. And if we do that, you know, if we make Krishna as the center of our lives, right, and we live our lives with that motivation, we can be, uh, without a problem, we can be engaged in our day-to-day -day activities, whatever routines we have, nothing has to change. Everything stays the same. The only thing that's changing is Krishna consciousness, right? Our minds are engaged in the lotus feet of the Supreme Lord, right? Of course, it's easier said than done, right? But through practice, it could be, as Krishna is saying, abhyasa yoga, abhyasa to konteya, vaira gena chagriya, right? Through practice, it is possible, right? So we have to practice. And that practice also takes a lot of time, right? It has to be a constant, diligent endeavor, right? And the sooner we can get into the practice, the better it is, right? If we wait for the last moment, who knows? I mean, the, death, the first problem is that death can come anytime, right? We never know what's going to happen tomorrow, right? Anything can happen. And also, as we become old, our mental faculties, right? The facilities that have been provided to this, to this material body, <clears throat> they start to dwindle, right? And as they start to dwindle, our abilities to understand the science also, you know, they start to weaken. So instead of us waiting uh, for the time when we become old and spending our prime age and simply wasting our time uh, in just these materialistic activities, <clears throat> we have to adopt Krishna consciousness very, very seriously. Right? This is the most important thing. We have to understand this. Right? There cannot be anything more important than this. Right? I mean, if we think about our lives, I mean, if you look back and see the time when we were children right, and today when we have grown up, it seems like it's like all the time passed in a matter of seconds, right? Like it's very difficult to comprehend how fast the time passes, right? And similarly, this time will pass and we'll become old. We won't even know that we have become old, right? 100 years is nothing. I mean, if we look at the age of the universe and the age of the earth and, you know, so many generations have passed, 
you know people all the time are coming and going away that's what is happening right we have to be very very careful and observant in observing these these happenings around us right we have to become more conscious of this right we see that people are coming into this material world you know so many children are taking birth every day in hospitals across the universe and so many people are dying are cremated every day right so this coming and going is going on and there is a small span of time in between where we think we live our lives as as if this is the ultimate reality as if this will never end right this was one of the questions that yaksha asked yudhishthir that what is the biggest surprise and uh, yudhishthir answered that everyone sees people dying but they still think that they will never die right so we we'll, we live this life as if this material world is be all end all this is everything and we are trying our best to to be the topmost controller right but no matter what you are you know uh, eventually uh, we see even you know dhirubhai and mari these rich, rich rich people those kings and all right they alexander the great or whatever it is right all of all of them they eventually had to die right and we can just read them read about some of them in history and gradually the history will also change right? so it's not a big deal so we have to understand the temporariness of this material world right although it is important i'm not trying to say that uh, material world is not important it is important but the ultimate benefit right the ultimate objective is to understand uh, the difference between the superior energy and the inferior energy as krishna is saying in this uh, in this verse that right? both of these energies the material energy and the spiritual energy the living entity are the energies of the lord himself right? they are coming from the lord but our true benefit is in realizing that material energy is simply to facilitate our uh, engagement and our desire to be the controllers right <clears throat> so we have to understand that we are beyond the material energy of the supreme lord right we are the super, we are the superior energy of the lord <clears throat> and we are his part and parcel and our ultimate benefit is to engage uh, in his loving devotional service so i will take a pause here and see if there are any questions or comments um sorry i'm driving but i just want to say thank you very much um i really enjoyed your explanations and praises be to prabhu pat for his you know um explanations as well of of the bhagavad gita verse it makes a lot of sense thank you thank you prabhu ji thank you for that thank you uh, prabhu very wonderful class i really uh, like the you know the explanation what you have given how we are entangled and how we can get out and uh, coming to uh, practice abhyasa uh, you know in material world like you know we all know the example is like you know when a like example of a body builder when he's trying to build his muscles he spends time going to gym you know eating special diet taking care of him himself you know not eating junk or anything but his focus is to build the muscles you know like that the same way when we are trying to when we have this knowledge about you know how we can engage and how we are part and parcel and we are not this body of course it does it doesn't come very easily mm-hmm. because we are always in the three modes you know under the influence of three modes but uh, if we keep practicing focusing like you know in material world when they can get success why can't we also get success in spiritual world so we just you know not to lose hope but we can still try every day keeping this uh, you know kind of example before us that when a person in material world can achieve his goal why can't we also try to achieve the goal in this very life so i just wanted to share this thank you so much mataji uh, thank you for that wonderful example that you gave of a bodybuilder right i mean uh, people who do that they, they realize uh, it's not easy right they have to practice day in and day out they have to suffer literally 
you know they have those cravings to consume uh, nice meals and big food items but uh, they just try to refrain from that right so if for a simple material objective it could take so much time and effort here actually the ask is very very simple right and if, in fact in this age uh, in kali yuga uh, krishna has made it extremely easy for us right and he he came as mahaprabhu as sri chaitanya mahaprabhu to just distribute this to all of us freely right all we have to do is chant and dance right the entire sankirtan movement uh that was spearheaded by shri mahap shri chaitanya mahaprabhu right that's so easy uh for any one of us to follow right it's enjoyable it's like you don't really have to do any kind of hardships you simply you know uh relish wonderful prasadam uh we simply chant we dance and we can engage in our day to day activities the only thing that needs to change is consciousness right and even with all of these facilities if we are not if we are still not able to do that there cannot be a bigger misfortune than that right so we always have to be mindful of it uh we have to be conscious of that fact that you know this facility is here with us today right you know you are in the us you know i recently moved from us to canada and even here tomorrow i'm going to a program hardly 10 15 minutes per drive where bhakti marg maharaj is coming and he is giving a talk we have so many proper disciples around us right so no matter where you go on the planet there is a facility for you to practice krishna consciousness by the mercy of prabhupada and mahaprabhu right we won't get such a time in the future right so we have to take this thing very very seriously uh there cannot be a better opportunity for us to perfect our lives uh and go back get out of the circle of birth in that it's uh, i mean uh, we are so merciful we are so grateful uh, to prabhupada and mahaprabhu that they have made it so convenient to us and the least that we can do is just to follow the instructions right simply find some time in our days uh, to engage in krishna consciousness you know chanting our rounds sincerely making sure that we are following the four regulatory principles and associating uh, with the devotees associating uh, uh, with the scriptures right and just by doing that we can attain perfection right in previous ages you know people had to go through so many penances right uh, and this age all of these are impractical right because there are so many distractions and our minds are small uh, so you know this is a great opportunity and as mathe ji pointed out if we are a little bit sincere uh, with a little bit of a focus uh, you know there is a very good opportunity and we should not miss that so thank you so much for that example prabhu i have a question yes i mean like we are very fortunate but you know there are so many people like thousands i can say that you know they hear but they cannot take up right away because many other factors they play very important role mm-hmm. like you know mercy from the lord from the pure devotee and our sukriti in previous life everything you know mm-hmm. so uh i definitely yes we are we are very grateful and fortunate to be part of propat family that you know mm-hmm. and uh, yes that that's that keeps us motivated you know because um as you know uh, all the like you know the living entities like we see animals the difference between them and us is consciousness you know and we can express we can speak we have this intelligence Mm-hmm. even even the animals they have tongue but they cannot chant you know but we have this opportunity and we are very fortunate so we need to like you know inspire and uh, as you said that you know by in uh, staying in association following morning program what propad has given us mm-hmm. definitely you know uh, help us and um, we may not be seeing ourselves as improved you know but yep. if you look at back like how we were 10 years back or 20 years back how our consciousness was though it is like very little baby steps we are taking but yeah. still there is a progress you know yeah. nothing is lost on this path you know lord says that so Absolutely. it's always get, get carried uh, forward like you right. know the example of like a bank balance what once we leave this body in this life the bank balance is gone but the spiritual mm-hmm. bank balance which we are building up now it is eternal it will carry forward with us in in whatever life we are taking it so krishna 
is like very compassionate on us that he's calling us back by somehow the other way he is he's attracting us you know absolutely so, yeah it's very wonderful class prabhuji thank you thank you so much mataji and uh, for that very nice explanation makes a lot of sense yeah so the 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 point that you made right whatever progress we can make uh, on this path it always stays right it never goes and krishna says that in bhagavad gita right raju vidya raju koyam pavitra midam uttamam pratyaksh avagamam dharmam uh pratyaksh avagamam dharmam susukham kartum avyayam right so he says avyayam this part uh, this word avyayam means uh, that some something that is never lost right so whatever little progress we can make here you know we should not worry about you know whether we will reach perfection or not eventually it depends upon the mercy right and the mercy comes if we are making our effort the mercy will definitely come right so we should just focus on making sure we are sticking to the practice right and if we stick to the practice and whatever progress we make you know that always stays right so we should not get discouraged whatever we can do we should do our best and uh, the success is actually guaranteed right that's why i said there cannot be a better opportunity for us than the kind of opportunity we have, that we have today right so we should make the best use of it any other last comments or questions it's 759 so we can take at the most one more otherwise we will conclude okay if not we will pay obeisances to all the assembled vaishnavas thank you all so much for uh, listening so attentively thank you sir thank you so much prabhu ji vancha kalpati rupesh cha kripa sindhu be vacha patita naam pavane pyo vaishnave pyo namo namaha anant koti vaishnav jan ki jai shila prabhupad ki jai hare krishna hare krishna